In the cupboard or on the shelf There's music you can make yourself You can make music out of just about anything Hi, I'm Mick Conway and I've always wanted to play everything Hold on, I just did! But of course, you don't need to do it all at once You can play and make great sounds from all kinds of things around the house Things that are not usually meant to be musical instruments. Now, I'm a bit of a klutz at making things, so if I can do this, so can you. Everything we're about to make is easy to make and easy to play. So get ready, ready to experiment, ready to be surprised, ready to have fun, because you can make music out of just about anything. Some people like to drink from a drinking straw, but I like to make music with it. Doesn't matter what kind of straw, any straw will do. What we do is we get the straw, and what we're going to do is cut a little point at the end of the straw. So we just get a pair of scissors, and here we go. And we've got a point like that. What we do now is we're going to make a reed. Okay, to make a reed we use our teeth. We're just going to flatten it off by putting it in the mouth and sliding it up and down. So here we go. Just a little bit and let's see if that makes a noise. Voila! We have a note. But we need a few more notes because one note's pretty boring. What we can do to get different notes and play a tune is to put a few holes in it. To do that, we need a carpenter's wood screw. And I hold it like that, and you see that? We just screw, turn the screw into the drinking straw, just like that. Not too much, otherwise we'll go through the other side. And look what we've got, a hole. And when we do that, we can change the pitch, we can change the note. Well, that's good. And we can just put a few more in. Just up the straw like that. I've got one that I've already made before, my favourite straw here. It's got four holes in. And I just put my fingers over the holes because when we take our fingers on and off the holes in the straw, we can change the note. So here we go. I'm going to take my fingers off as I go up the straw. Okay, now let's see if we can play something. Let's see if we can play it with a bit of music, eh? You can make music out of just about anything. A little imagination and experimenting. Cleaning up with disposable gloves can be boring, but add a couple of paper toweling rolls and you've got a whole lot of fun. So don't throw away those cardboard rolls when you're finished. You can make music out of them. So what we need is a disposable glove, some masking tape, some plastic tubing that we can get from the hardware, and two cardboard funnels, one that fits snugly inside the other. So to start, what we do is we snip off the end of the thumb of the glove. Okay, careful not to cut your fingers. And then we stretch the rubber glove over the cardboard roll, like that. 
and we pull, we pull it down firmly but not too tight with the thumb sticking out and we just put in the plastic tube like that and we line it up close to level with the top of the funnel and then we just pull it down and then we just pull everything down nice and firmly the thumb as well just like that nice and tight with a bit of masking tape and wrap it around and now we've got something that hopefully will make some music <laughs> Now that could get very boring if you just played the same note all the time. So if we want to change the note and play something really interesting, what we do is we get the other funnel and put it like that. And when we slide it up and down, what happens is we can change the note. The longer the funnel, or the two funnels, the deeper the note. So let's hear a really deep note. Now if I push it up, and make it shorter, we get a higher note. Let's have a listen to that. So then we can actually change the note and play just about anything we like. Let's see what we can play. See if you recognize this. See if I recognize this. You can make music out of just about anything A little imagination and experimenting People throw out old tin cans. Now, they can be recycled or they can be used for other things, including making music. And I reckon we might make a tin can banjo. So to do that, what we need is a tin can like this with one end taken off. Now, get a hammer and a nail and we put a hole right through the middle of the base of the tin can. Now we get some fishing line. Doesn't matter how much, but just enough to make a string. And we thread the fishing line through the hole, and then we pull it through. Then we get a washer, washer like this, or a bit smaller or maybe even a nut, like that. And we thread the fishing line through the nut and tie a few knots, here we go. And we've got a nut through there. And then while the string is through, we get the other end, get a bit of wood, tie another knot onto a stick, a bit of wood, a bit of dowel, doesn't matter, a couple of knots make that secure, wind it on like that, and we've got a tin can banjo, ready to play. I've got a tin can banjo that I made earlier, it's a bit more my size. Now, wind it up, tuck it under the arm, hold it close to our body, and then we just pull the string tight and start plucking it with any finger you like. And if we pull the string or the fishing line a bit tighter, or even shorten it by winding up the stick a little bit, we get a high note. Can you hear the high note? A little bit looser. You get a lower note. And that way, you can change the pitch.
Make sure though, you keep the fishing line in the middle so it doesn't touch the edge of the tin because when you do like that, it doesn't sound very good. But when you go up in the middle, it sounds much better. Let's play some music, shall we? Here we go with the tin can banjo. <laughs> You can make music out of just about anything A little imagination and experimenting The didgeridoo is a traditional Aboriginal instrument of Northern Australia. But in the South, one of the instruments they played is the gum leaf. Okay, now there's two different ways of playing the gum leaf, and I'm going to show you both. And the Aboriginal friend that taught me how to play gum leaf taught me with a caprosma or mirror leaf. But actually, there's lots of different kinds of leaves and bushes and trees that will make a good sound. So, Let's try the first technique, which actually is probably the hardest. What we do is we hold the leaf like that, horizontally, and we stretch the leaf, pull it nice and tight. See how it's bending over like that? And then we blow like that into the leaf. And let's have a listen. Can you hear that note? Now by pulling it tighter or looser, we can actually change the pitch. Let's have a listen. You can hear all the different notes there. Now you might have a bit of trouble with this, but keep persevering. It doesn't always come immediately, but it's once you get that, and you start learning, it starts to sound like a beautiful trumpet. Now I'm going to show you the second technique, which is actually easier and still lots of fun. What we do is we get the leaf and we curl the leaf over, okay? Up the top near the stem end of the leaf. We curl the leaf over like that and we pinch the two edges of the leaf together with our thumb and our finger, just like that. But we leave it nice and round through there. It's got to be round. We don't crease it, we leave it, nice, leave it nice and round. Okay, then we get our other hand, and we, with our thumb and our first finger, we block it off. We block it off completely, nice and flat along there. Still leaving it round at the top, flat across the leaf like that. Now what's happening here is the sound that we get is the two edges of the leaf that are meeting, just these two edges leaf that are together there, and when they meet, they vibrate when we blow into it. I'm going to blow into it. I'm going to put my mouth right over to my fingers and I'm going to blow into it. Oh, pretty good, eh? Okay, if we move it back and forth or twist it around a little bit, we can change the pitch. Can you hear all those different notes? Okay, we can actually play a tune. Let's see what we can get. Maybe we'll try this one. Not bad, eh? Sometimes playing music is as easy as humming a tune. With paper and comb, that's exactly what you do. What we do is just get a nice hair comb, very nice, oh, do I look beautiful? And then we just stretch the paper over the hair comb, just like that. Pull it down nice and tight with our thumbs like that, our fingers so the paper's nice and tight. And then we hum a melody, but we hum with our lips like this. Ooh, I'll do that, watch this. Okay, so paper and comb can make some, well, you can play just about anything because you can hum to just about anything. Now, there's another little thing that you can find around the shops, toy shops and sometimes music shops, and that is a kazoo. Here's a kazoo here. There's all kinds of different kinds of kazoos. 
And when you hum into it, just like the paper and comb, you get a very similar sound. So if you add something like this, what I've got here is an oil funnel. And when you add the kazoo in the top end, you get a very different sound, so you can experiment with different sounds with the kazoo. Have a listen to this. Another way of playing a similar thing is by blue blowing. Oh, what's blue blowing? Many years ago, there was a group called the Mound City Blue Blowers. Blue blowing basically is singing, singing or humming into a cup. Pretty much any cup will do. And then using your hand to mute the sounds. So you get something like this. Another way of playing it though, of course, is with an empty can that hasn't, doesn't have any bottoms or tops. So it's just a long cylinder and you can do this. Very similar sound, different ways of blue blowing. Okay, and I reckon we can have a lot of fun just humming something. Why don't we hum something now? You can make music out of just about anything. A little imagination and experimenting. The bass instrument is an always an important part of any band. Traditional Australian bush bands often used the tea chest. Where in America, well, the wash tub is often used to make a bass instrument. Okay, this is a plastic one, but they usually used a wooden one in the old days. And just about any box though will do it. All we need is some string or cord, a bit like this, this is a nylon cord. So we just start by tying a couple of knots on the end, put the string through a hole in the box. Get a nail, bang a hole through there. And now we're going to thread the cord through the hole. We get the string and we thread the string. And we just put it through the hole, pull it through like that. And because we've got a knot on that end, it doesn't pull through. And we just put the, bo the box back on the ground and we get a pole, a mop or a broom. Here's a broom, that'll do just fine. And we tie a knot or a bow around the pole, like that. Put it on the box. Now, if you're worried about slipping, we can also get a bottle top and put it in the corner so that the pole doesn't slip off the corner and just put it in a nail or through there to hold it till it's tight there and then put the broomstick or the pole there and that'll hold it in position. Okay, now we put our foot on the other side and we're ready to play, holding the string. Now, if we pull the string back, we get a high note. Pull the broomstick forward, the, bro the string gets looser, Spoons are very versatile things. Some people like to eat with them. Other people like to impersonate koala bears. 
but I like to play music with them. And what we do is we get two spoons, okay? Preferably soup spoons, but other spoons will work. But just find the spoons that suit your hand. Put them back to back like that. One between the thumb and the first finger. And we hold it quite firmly. Then we add the second spoon and put it between the first finger and the middle finger, back to back. And we grip it nice and tightly in there. People think it's loose, not loose. Nice and firm. So if I shake that, that stays just firmly like that. Now, just with a relaxed hand though, but still keeping it firm, we just hit it on our thigh or our leg, just like that. Nice and relaxed on the beat, but still holding it firmly. You can try other parts of your body. And now to get a more interesting rhythm, we add the other hand. What it does is it stays still and the spoons hit the hand. So it goes something like this. So we're just tapping along like that on the beat. And then occasionally we bring the spoon up to the hand. So the hand just stays still. And you just try different rhythms. Now another thing you can do is actually to do the slide, which is to slide the spoon down along the fingers. Hear that? When we do that, we can just add a bit of variation. You can make music with just about anything A little imagination and experimenting For thousands of years, the most common container for carrying water or liquids was the earthen jug. Trouble is, what to do with it when you finish drinking? In America, in the 1800s, black musicians used it as a bass instrument. They combined them with banjos and fiddles and things like that, and the jug band was formed. <laughs> To play the jug, it isn't too hard. What we're going to do is make a raspberry noise with our lips. That's the basic note, but if you actually loosen your lips, you get a deeper note, and if you tighten your lips, you get a higher note. So you can go. So just by changing the tension on your lips, and you're actually blowing down. So the air is just coming out there and going down a little bit. Now where you're going to aim is you're going to aim into the jug. And when you aim to the jug, it resonates and sounds a whole lot better. So have a listen to this. Can you see that? Then you can go. Well, it sounds pretty silly, doesn't it? But we can actually sound a bit like a tuba and we can make lots of different sounds. Now, we can actually do something else that is a little bit more technical and you don't have to do this, but it actually can give it a different sound and a different kind of uh, feel, which is using the voice. The voice, if we try and match the voice, to the sound that you're making with your pursed lips, then you get this. So I'll do it with the pursed lips and then I'll add my voice and you'll hear it. Can you hear that? Okay, now if I do that into the jug, 
you'll hear, this is with voice. Today, there's not a lot of earthen jugs around, sometimes there are, but we can use other bottles and containers. A milk bottle will make a very similar sound. Doesn't quite have the same ring, let's try this one. That sounds better. How about this one? Or even a soft drink bottle. So lots of things can be used and uh, it's just a matter of experimenting and you can play the jug or the bottle. You can make music out of just about anything A little imagination and experimenting Here we go One of the most beautiful sounds can come from a carpenter's saw. La da 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 da. La da 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 da. Of course, that might be a bit silly, but a better way of playing the saw is, well, with a few things that you can get around the house, including a piece of nylon string and a nice bendy bit of wood. Okay, what we do is we cut a slot in the end of the wood, which I've already done, and then we will tie a couple of knots in the end of the string, slot the string into a bit of wood, until you get like a bow. That could be very dangerous, but even more dangerous is a bit of music with a musical saw. Now, most people like to sit down when they play the saw, but I like to stand up, so I'm going to do it my way. But remember, most people do sit down. Now, you've got to be careful. Notice I've got a bit of tape there. That's to save my trousers rather than anything else. <laughs> and I put it between my legs, just above the knees. We start by bending the saw back like that in the put the end of the saw in the palm of the hand and then with the thumb come down and bend it back. So you've got two bends there. One bend going that way and one bend coming out towards you. So I've got a slight S bend. Now with this we're going to stroke it. Now we need to angle the string at pretty much exactly right angles to the edge of the saw, that is the, the flat edge of the saw, not the tooth edge of the saw. Okay, we don't stroke the tooth edge of the saw, it'll just break the string. <laughs> so we get something like this. We can wobble our knees, we can wobble our arms, and we get a bit of tremolo. It's a beautiful sound, very eerie. The thing is, we can actually play melodies just the more we bend it, the higher the note. So have a listen. We start down low, we follow the bend, which is the main bend. I'll start down there, that's the main bend. And as I bend it, that bend gets higher and higher. You watch this. First we've got to select the right saw. Now what we need is a saw that's at least 26 inches long, which is quite a long way, I think it's about 65 centimetres long. It needs to be a long saw. Okay, but not all saws will work. So when you go to the hardware, they'll probably think you're crazy. But what you need to do is get the saw and bend it in an S bend. Put it down like that and then bend it back like that. And then we get a stick or a bit of wood or something and we tap it.
Now, can you hear that ringing? That means that saw is going to play. Sometimes when you do it, it, it sounds like that. You've got no hope, okay? But that's what we do. We just bend it back into a slight S bend and tap it with a bit of wood or anything really. And if it rings, you've got a saw that will play. And you can buy those in ordinary hardware stores, but you can also buy another saw, something like this, which is a longer saw again, and you can buy these on the net. And uh, what they are, they're actually built especially for playing music with because they're slightly longer and they get a few more notes in them, which is uh, sometimes really important. A word of warning, the saw is sharp and the saw could make you sore. So you've got to be very careful here. I do want to make sure that somebody's around. You know, I don't want any of you rushing off to your homes and trying this tonight. Rush off to someone else's home and try it tonight. <laughs> no, be very careful. It is a very sharp saw. It really does cut things. So make sure it doesn't cut you. You can make music out of just about anything. A little imagination and experimenting. Finish with that jar or tin of food. Don't throw it away. Homemade shakers or maracas are very easy to make and very easy to play. Well, this is what we do. We just get, a, for instance, this tin here, take the lid off and put a bit of rice in it. Now, don't put too much rice, that's the trick. Just a little bit, maybe less than a third. So we just put a bit in of any container. There we go, I don't know if you can see that. There we go, and then we just put the lid on Sometimes you might need to put a bit of tape on, but in this case, I don't think we will. Now let's see if we shake that, and this is where we experiment a little bit. And it's the way you use it. And you get different rhythms just by shaking it around. And the good thing to do is to actually experiment with different sounds. So maybe we'll try this one and see what this sounds like. Okay, put the lid on, good on tight. Give it a lighter sound, that sounds good. Here I've got a yoke container and what I've done, because I wanted the handle, is put a little bit of dowel through the lid and then taped it up. Different sound again. Here's a, a, a tin can. Even plastic fruit can make a good shaker. What we do is we put a hole just about somewhere over there, and we get a funnel. We stick the funnel in, and that's where we get the rice and pour the rice into the funnel. And that's all you have to do. And then we just seal it by using a little bit of putty or some sort of filler and just plug the hole up, and you've got. Ooh. Plastic fruit, you can't go wrong. You can make music out of just about anything A little imagination and experimenting Tired of reading bad news all the time? Why not lift your spirits with a little music? Some people like to read the paper. Some people don't read the paper. And some people like to listen to the paper. I like to listen to this paper. Let's have a listen. Just creating rhythms by tearing it sounds a bit like a DJ scratching. Now notice that I'm tearing it with the grain. All newspapers have a grain. The broadsheet, the grain goes the length and that's why I like tearing a broadsheet, the big paper. 
the tabloids, the grain goes against the length. And if you tear it against the length, this is what happens. Oh, it went off at an angle. It always wants to go with the grain. So the best thing is to tear it with the grain along the length. So we can create all kinds of rhythms with a newspaper. And I've got a newspaper here that I reckon hmm, looks very musical. Oh yes. Read all about it, read all about it, read the ripping news. Read all about it, read all about it, it's terrible to refuse. Have you heard the latest? Music is the greatest. Read all about it, read all about it. Read the ripping news. Read the ripping news. Read the ripping news. Read the ripping news. Rip the song, don't you think? Think that was a real ripper? Oh, you didn't? Oh, oh, so you thought it was really terrible, did you? Really terrible indeed. A load of rubbish. Maybe all this, this, this stuff is just a load of rubbish. Read all about it, read all about it, read the ripping news. Read the ripping news. Read the ripping news. Terrible. A load of rubbish. Traditional bush bands love their beer or their lager. When they finish drinking it, they can always clean up the mop and make some music. Just take the lid off, and we get two lids, and we put them back to back, and we're going to make a lager phone with beer bottle tops and a pole. We just get a hammer and a nail, and we put them back like that, and put a hole through there. Okay, here we go. And we have got a hole through those bottle tops. You can see that? Can you see that? There you go. And what we do then is we get a screw, a wood screw, and we put the wood screw, oh, it's already one through here, through the holes back to back like that. And we do a whole lot of those. We'll probably need at least 40 of those. Probably some people have hundreds of them. What we do next is we screw it onto the pole or the mop or the broomstick. Screw it in, and when you do that, you've got all these loose bottle tops. And when you shake them, and rattle. And when you hit the the uh, the pole or the broomstick or the mop on the floor, they shake like that. One-legged Morris dancer. That can be fairly boring after a while. So the next thing is we're going to do well the crossbar. Now what we do to do that is we get a hammer handle. Just like this, and I won't do it now because I've already got some with cuts in it. We saw slots into the hammer handle. So we have a whole lot of grooves down there. Here's one that I've already made up. So when we do that, we get a kind of a ratchet across the, the wood. So we just go like that. And it also makes the bottles rattle as well. When you combine it with going like that, Think about beat, rhythm, and melody. Okay? Humming a melody. There's a melody. Here comes a beat. There's a beat on the on the on the, the mop there. And now adding the rhythm with the uh, the hammer handle. There's beat and rhythm there. Can you hear that? And now the melody. We've got all three things at once. The beat, the rhythm and the melody. That is a lagophone. Australians are good improvisers. One way of catching a fox in the old days was to make a whistle 
out of a tin can lid. It's supposed to sound like a rabbit in trouble. Trouble is, it just sounds like a whistle to me. We start by getting a tin can like this and removing the lid just with a regular tin can opener. Now I've got one already made, so here it is here. Now a word of warning. You've got to be very careful with this. In fact, what would be a really good idea is to do it with a parent or an adult because these bits here are very, very sharp. Okay, word of warning over. Let's see if we can make a tin can whistle. Okay, what we do is first of all, fold it in half. So I get a ruler, you don't have to have this, but this just helps. And we put it across about halfway. There we go, like that. And then we just fold the tin can like that. So what we've got then is that. And now we're going to make a hole about a centimetre from the middle of the folded edge. Right in the centre, but just, just about there. So here we go. I'm just going to put a hole in and hit it right through both sides of the lid. So here we go. I'm just going to... So the nail has gone right through both sides of the tin lid. Come through on this side into there and on the other side has come out there. To play it, we're going to be very careful because what we're going to do is open up this tin can just a little bit. We're going to be very careful because the edges are very sharp. So very careful with your fingers. Just open it up a bit like a taco shell. So we've got it a bit like that. To play it, we need to put it in the right position in the mouth. So we start by putting it in the mouth with the tin can lid nail side up. The side that we put the nail in is the top side and the other side where the nail went through is the bottom side. So we put it right to the edge of our mouth and put our mouth right over it and right over the hole. Like that. Then we're just gonna position the tongue. Now the tongue, you just find a position. You usually pull it back a little bit and just find a position that you'll get the whistle with. It might take, you know, a minute or so. The main, you may get it immediately. It's just a matter of luck, really. And when I actually move my tongue back and forth, you heard those different notes, ee or ee or. That's that's my tongue just going back and forth, changing the pitch just a little bit. Plastic cups. Save on washing up. But what to do with them when the party's over? I know, we can turn them into chickens. We get the plastic cup and we get a wood screw. Okay, And that's an easy way of making a hole in the base of the cup without breaking it. So you just put it in the middle there and turn it around. Keep turning, keep turning, keep turning. Eventually it'll go through. There we go, we've got the the screw through the hole, through the base. I've got a nice little hole there. And now we're going to get a bit of string, about, about a metre's length. Ordinary string will do, maybe nylon string will work as well. And then we just cut the string and we thread the string through the hole. It goes through really easily because the, the hole is big enough. Put through the cup, so we've got something like that. Now we're going to tie a knot around a washer. There you go. That'll stop. All that does is stop the string sliding through the hole. So we've got that. We just pull the string through, so the string can't go any further. There we go. We've got a nice long piece of string here. We tie that piece of string onto a bit of sponge. 
just a bit of regular foam sponge, a couple of knots. Now with the sponge we just dip it in a bit of water. There's a bit of water in this cup. So just and now here comes the magic, the miracle, the chicken or the chook miracle. It doesn't look like a chook, but it can sound like a chook. What we do is just get the sponge and grip the string at the top of the cup like that, not too tight, and just give it short little jerks. Monday rubbish, Tuesday rubbish, Wednesday and Thursday rubbish. <laughs> People say, my music is rubbish. And in this case, they'd be right. And we can make music out of rubbish. Rubbish bags, in fact. We've got a nice big rubbish bag, garbage bag, whatever. Tie a couple of knots, one in either end, one there, and one there. We've got a musical instrument. Doesn't look like one, does it? But it's the way you use it. And all you've got to do is pull really hard and then create a few rhythms. Rubbish. In the old days, the old radio days, the Foley artist or sound effects maker had a very important job. That was to make sound pictures. If there was a train going by, we needed something like this. Or maybe there was a cuckoo clock. Or maybe we wanted a crow in the script. Maybe even thunder and lightning. What we need is a nice heavy cardboard roll, like a draper's roll or a post pack, about eight centimetres diameter. Some very strong glue. We need a wing nut and a short bolt and a couple of washers. We need a long spring. We need a wood screw or a nail to make a hole with. A pair of scissors, a pen or pencil, a ruler, a saw, a bit of hard plastic and optional is a bench vise. So we start by getting the cardboard roll, putting in the vise if you've got one. So we mark it about eight centimeters from the end of the tube, make a little mark, and then we just can hand draw a line about 45 degrees down to the edge of the tube. So now we're going to cut the funnel at an angle. Now I've already cut it at the other end, so we're going to use that just to save time. That's what you finish up with, something like that. Now what we're going to do is mark that on the bit of plastic because we're going to put the plastic on the end of of. The surface here. So we've just put the funnel onto the plastic and then we just draw around the outer edges of the tube. Then we get a pair of scissors and cut around Getting close. So we get something like that. We're going to put a hole through the middle of it, roughly the middle. You can use a screw or you can use a nail. Put a hole in there, push it through, all the way through. Let's put a washer on it first, then push the bolt through. 
and then we put a washer on this side like that and then we put the wing nut onto the end of the bolt. Now we're ready to glue. So we've got, we've got this and we're going to glue it onto the surface that we just cut before. And now we need very strong glue for this. I've got some strong glue here. And what we do need to do is just run the glue around there and then place the cover over like that with the wing nut on the outside. Once that's glued, we can add the spring. Now we need a, a long spring like this. Uh, this is a door spring. And we get a pair of pliers. And we pull the spring out and just, just the, on the end until you get a bit, of a bit of a hook on the end. Because what we're going to do is hook it underneath the washer. Loosen, loosen off the, uh, the wing nut and slide the spring under the washer and then tighten up the wing nut. It's nice and firm and it's hanging like that. The first people making music in Australia were Aborigines. In Australia for thousands of years, indigenous musicians have been playing the didgeridoo. It's an instrument that requires our admiration and our respect. Started off being a tree trunk, it's been hollowed out by white ants, cleaned and decorated and uh, makes a beautiful, a haunting and eerie sound and can tell all kinds of stories as well. In various parts of Australia, however, PVC pipe has been adapted to make a similar sound. I know some indigenous people who like playing these. I've got a PVC pipe here. It's about four centimetres in diameter. This one's about a metre long, uh, but they can be cut to any length, which is good because then you can actually pitch them to different lengths. This one here is actually pitched to a D. To play the pipe, what we need is to vibrate our lips like this. Some people do it right from the front of the lips, but I do it from the side. That gives you your basic note. Now to create rhythms, which is what it's all about with playing the didgeridoo, you use your mouth and you use your tongue. Have a listen to this, this is my tongue going back and forth. The didgeridoo, even though it's an Aboriginal instrument, it's actually not an Aboriginal word. It's got different names and different clans. It's become the universal word for the instrument, but actually didgeridoo is a rhythm word. So. To do the word didgeridoo, I'm just using my tongue. So have a listen to this. I'm going to say the word didgeridoo. So even though my mouth is closed and just vibrating, my lips are closed, my mouth, my teeth are slightly open and my tongue is going back and forth inside my mouth going. And then I start saying the words didgeridoo. Okay, so we've got rhythm word didgeridoo. The word I was taught was didgeridoo. I'll do that one. So we've got two different words. There's lots of different words and they create all kinds of different rhythms. The next bit is the tricky bit. This is called circular breathing. To get the sound coming out all the time, that's tricky when you need to breathe in. So what we do is circular breathing. We push out with our cheeks, like that. 
And at the same time, we breathe in with our nose at the same time. So here we go. Have a listen to this. So that way I can actually get air into my, uh, into my lungs at the same time as pushing out the sound. So you, when you combine that with the rhythm words, it sounds like you're just continually doing it all the time. So have a listen to this. I'm going to do it and I'm going to point my finger up when I'm actually doing the circular breathing. So you'll not only see my cheeks puffing up, but you'll also see my finger up and that'll show you. And I, sometimes you can do it on a count, like on a four or an eight, or you can just do it when you're starting to run out of air. I mean, it's up to you. But here we go. Now there's one more step, apart from the rhythm, apart from the circular breathing and the basic note, the next step is to use your voice to make the sound of all the animals, like the kookaburra, or the crow, or maybe the dingo. Lots of different sounds, lots of different animals. So I'm going to do all those things we did before into the didgeridoo and you'll hear it, okay? So first of all, I'm going to play the basic note, then we're going to go into the rhythm, then we're going to do the circular breathing, and I'll point my finger up, and then I'm going to add the voice, and you'll hear that as well. jump an octave by blowing much harder. So here's the basic note. Now when we do the overblow it sounds like this. That is uh, about an octave above the basic note. So that's the basic note. Here's the overblow. Now I'm going to do all the other things we did once again, the rhythm and the, and the, and the noises, and I'm going to do the overblow as well. Here we go. Plastic plumbing pipe and an old thong. Usually pretty boring, but when it comes to music, absolutely fascinating. Because we can make what's called a thongophone or a, a plastic pipe xylophone. Let's try. What we do is we get a pipe and we cut it to the required length with a saw. I won't do that now, but with a saw, you just either a hacksaw or a carpenter saw with a bench vise. Be careful you do it because it's very sharp. And you cut it to the required lengths, which are in the booklet. And we've got different sizes like these. They're tied together with elastic. About it's an elastic bit like this, two meters of elastic like that. Okay, it's quite a long way. And what we do is we get the pipe, we start with one pipe that's the right length, and we just tie a knot or a couple of knots, leaving on the end about about 30 centimetres length, doesn't matter, just close to that, and we just tie a double knot and we just get all the other pipes and do the same. We tie them basically together, so they're like that, but when you pull the elastic, they stretch out. So pull the elastic and they stretch out like that. And you can tie that to a chair or a table and you can have them vertical and that's really good if you can get them vertical. Another way of doing though is just to hold them like this horizontal. Now we've got to line these up approximately 
approximately flat along here, it's parallel, and then we get a shoe or a thong and we hit them. You can actually play some great things on the thongophone, I think it's called. And I'll let you to experiment with that, but I'm going to show you something else because if you can get some pipe that's a bit thinner, like this poster pipe, here we go. See that how it's a lot thinner? So when you hit it, it's got a much lighter sound. Or if you can get it, something like this. When you put them all together, like this, when you do put them all together, get a texture pen and mark off what the notes are. So you've got the various lengths and they're listed in the booklet. So you mark, as you cut them off to the right lengths, you mark what that is. If that's a C, a D, or an E, or an F, or whatever note it is. So you've got an octave, at least an octave. You can go further if, you, if you're that ambitious. And when you hit these, you get this sound. So that's just plastic pipes, very thin plastic pipes, these ones. The other ones were uh, plumber's pipes, which are a bit thicker, so you need to hit them on the end. Uh, but these ones, if you tap them, they've got a great resonance, and you can play, well, you can play just about any melody you like. When they get a present, some kids throw away the box that it came in. What a waste! It's a perfect accompaniment to a beautiful song. <laughs> And I'm going to show you how to play the cardboard box. It can be a cardboard box, or it could be a plastic box. Or maybe even a suitcase like this. Lots of things will work. It's just a matter of experimenting. Now, I've got a friend who actually started his career singing and playing with a cardboard box. And he became very famous. And he recorded lots and lots of albums. And he eventually, he became the administrator of the Northern Territory. His name is Ted Egan. And I'm going to show you how to play the cardboard box. Basically, it's just a matter of using your hands and your fingers. So you just get a box that's suitable to your size, tuck it under the arm, and tap away. That's really all you're doing, except that you want to create some interesting rhythms. So usually what I do is I tap with one hand, and with the other hand, I'm using my fingers. So I'm going, so a bit like when you're bored and you're, you're sitting around, you're going, what am I going to do next? And you go, I don't know, I can't think, uh, what will I do? Mm. Well, we just do that with that, and you've got a musical instrument, something that sounds good. So just experiment with that. Many years ago, a man by the name of Rolf Harris became very famous playing a bit of masonite. These days, masonite's a bit harder to get, but lots of things will do the same sort of job. This is just a bit of plastic, and if we hold it at either end, thumbs there, and what we do is wobble it. And if you wobble it a bit harder, Something like that. So you just change rhythms. We can 
make music around the house in lots of different ways with lots of different things. Go out in the garden. There's some other things that can make a bit of music too. For instance, the garden hose. You usually water the lawn or water the garden with this, but these days, some people don't even get to use their hoses. Just cut it off, not too hard. And then if we add a couple of funnels, a funnel like this, and here's one small funnel. This funnel is really a bigger funnel that I just cut off at the top there. And that makes the mouthpiece. So we're going to stick that in one end of the, of the hose. And in the other end, we're going to stick the big one. And what we've got here is a garden hose trumpet or a garden hose bugle, depending on your point of view. Now to do that, to make that sound, we just... That's what we do. And then by tightening our lips once again, or loosening them, you get different pitches. Something like that. That is a garden hose trumpet. In the old days, people used to wash their clothes by using a washboard in a wash tub and a scrubbing brush and a bit of soapy water and they'd scrub away scrubbing the clothes. And after a while, they'd also probably sing a few work songs. I've been working with the soap and brush, work with the soap and brush. It was quite a good rhythm instrument. And sometimes you'd get really fancy and maybe have two brushes. But these days, people play music with it. They'd be adding a few thimbles, with a few thimbles on their fingers, or maybe thimbles on a pair of gloves. These are just ordinary sewing thimbles, and you can get the same sort of thing. To play the washboard, you have the thimbles on, on, on the fingers, and you just tap with one, and usually the other one does a bit of a slide. You can change it around with all the different rhythms. So it's usually whatever hand you favour to tap, and the other one does a bit of a slide. You can slide both of them, particularly if you're doing crane imitations. Woo and that was used quite a bit too. So playing the washboard is a lot of fun, but a lot of people don't have washboards. They've become, well, pretty well, you know, out of date. But lots of things can make a similar sound. You can still get thimbles, and you can still get scrubbing brushes, and you can still find maybe a colander. Uh, maybe cheese grate. Oh, maybe. Oh, maybe. I'll try something else. But one thing we all have, the sink. Well, this is the modern day washboard, really, because it's got these. And maybe if you use a scrubbing brush, it sounds a bit like this. Feeling thirsty? Well, when you finish drinking, why not try a little music? I've got some bottles here. They've all got different levels of water. If you experiment with the different levels of water that you pour into the bottle with the funnel or something like that, you can actually get different sounds. Pretty close to an octave. Now, let's try something else. Let's try a few glasses. These are wine glasses. 
If you have different levels of water in the different wine glasses, you can get different notes. This one's got a lot of water, this one's got no water, and this one's just got about half full. So we'll tap on this one. Let's try the one that's half full. Let's try the one that's empty. Here we go. So try the different levels with the, the water and you can get, well, you can actually make a xylophone with wine glasses. Now, if we do something else, here's a very interesting experiment because we always like to experiment here. We put our finger into the water and we, with a wet finger, we run it around the top like that. And in a few seconds, something magic happens. starts to ring. Or maybe, let's try this one. A bit more water. Oh, that's better. Look at that. If you had a whole lot of wine glasses, you could actually create a whole melody just by running your finger around the top of the wine glass. And it's amazing what you can do with things around the house. You can make music out of just about anything and you can make some amazing sounds out of just about anything. If you get a washing machine hose like this one here and stick just a plastic cup on the end or any kind of cup, and tape it on just with a bit of tape. Simple as that. That's all you do. And then you spin it around. Watch this. The more you spin it, the higher the note. Pretty good, eh? That is a washing machine hose and a plastic cup. Anyone for tea? Hmm. Actually, tea is for the birds. Oh, no, I'll try this. You can make a bird whistle out of a teapot. What we do is we get a teapot, little aluminium ones like these, these little single serve teapots, and uh, what we do is cut a hole there, little V with a, with a hacksaw, okay, right there at the top of the spout. And then we get a piece of dowel like this, like a wall plug dowel, just a very thin small plug. We split it in half with a little chisel or something, and then we fit it in the top there. Okay, we fit it in there when it's cut in half. We'll take it in half, it's a bit half, in half like that. We shape it to the teapot and we put it in and glue it in firmly. Haven't got time to do that now. And then you've got a whistle. You've got to have a little bit of water in there. There's water about that high up there. And we just tip the water up and it goes into the spout. And you can also make a bird whistle out of a screw and a bit of wood. Have a listen to this. Just lots of noises if you experiment can make an incredible sound. Just twisting around a screw into a bit of wood. I'm not sure what kind of bird it is, but it's definitely for the birds. The teapot whistle is a bit silly really, isn't it? I think I'd like to play a little bit more serious music with a teapot, of course.
It's amazing what sounds you can get by experimenting with things around the house. Some things that you hit together can sound good, especially if you do it in a musical way. All the things that you've seen me do can be made easily, but it takes some practice and imagination to make them even sound better. So, have a go. Experiment. You might find lots of other things that can make great sounds. Now I'm going to show you a few things that we didn't do that take a little bit more work. A lot of the other things pretty straightforward. This one, a little bit more work. It's just a pineapple tin. It's got a bit of wood and a bit of tin around the edge and a bit of wire that's been hammered down with a hammer. And we get a kalimba. Here's something else. This is a cigar box ukulele. It's just an old cigar box with a few strings and a ukulele neck on it. Let's have a listen to this. Not bad, eh? And what about this? These garbage bins have been turned into a drum kit. Now, most drum kits have a bass drum and particularly have a hi-hat, which is the cymbal that goes up and down. Have a listen to this. I've just put the, uh, the beaters in and the, the pedals in and we've got a drum kit on the garbage bin. A garbage bin drum kit. There's the bass drum and here is the hi-hat. And when we put them together, Heavy metal! <laughs> so the music is in your hands. You can make music out of just about anything.